Hitapu. Peace and blessings, everyone. Shalom, assalamu alaikum. Peace and welcome, welcome. 
So good to see you for this exciting Tuesday night webinar brought to you by Committic Legacy. So welcome, welcome to Committic Legacy. I see we have a lot of folks coming in to our webinar tonight, as well as we are live on Facebook, on several Facebook channels, and we're live on our YouTube channel. So welcome to you all. I see we have Osarians in the house by the names. And we also have lots of guests. Uh, put a one in the chat. Uh, if you have, if this is your very first time being on a webinar with us. And if you are one of those lucky people, over a thousand people took our winter solstice course, our online on-demand winter solstice course, put a W in the chat so we can see who you are. And I want to welcome you to this exciting webinar tonight. And before we get started, for those who are not so familiar, let's take a look at what we're going to be talking about tonight, right now spirituality to enable you to live have you been longing for a deeper spirituality to enable you to live a healthier wealthier and more successful life to overcome stress and heal broken relationships to increase your focus mental clarity and resilience to meet difficult challenges and capitalize on major opportunities mott the 11 laws of health wealth and success a guided meditation course based on the wisdom teachings of ancient Egypt will empower you to do this and much more. The course is designed by Ratwan Nefer Amen from his 50 years of experience as a spiritual guide for thousands. His own meditation expertise has produced over 40 books and 100 meditation musical compositions including the internationally acclaimed seven-volume May Du Nater series that established him as the world authority on ancient Egyptian spirituality. Your comedic meditation course includes access to member-only webinars and guided meditations that will deepen your understanding of the science of meditation and the divine laws that guarantee progress in life. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced meditator, you will benefit from all 11 modules that activate each of the 11 faculties of your spirit. Each module includes detailed instruction on the comedic meditation script. This script that was uniquely developed by Rawun Nefer Amen, unites the application of the divine laws, affirmations, visualization technique, and mantras into a powerful meditation experience that gets results quickly. Now you can overcome the mental chatter and experience the healing of the meditation state in just a few minutes per day. Invest in your success and well-being. Get all 11 modules and save or get started with the four powers of the divine spirit that lays the foundation for your spiritual evolution. The course is delivered to your mobile device immediately, so get started today. All right. Yes, yes. We're talking about meditation today. Meditation is the critical skill that improves every area of your life and specifically comedic meditation, which has been pioneered by our guest and the designer of this course, Ra'un Nefer Amen. Ra'un Nefer Amen has been serving the community for 50 years this year, um, basically teaching every week, sometimes multiple times a week in multiple cities uh, and he started his one of his first works was way back in 1974, I believe it was. It was called The Realization of Netter Nu. So he was speaking about Netter Nu, 
which is comedic terms for the highest aspects of our spirit and God's spirit way back in 1970s. Um, so this is nothing new. And through 50 years of experience in application of these principles to his own life, and more importantly, 50 years of teaching and guiding the lives of thousands, he's been able to bring a very uh, application-based uh, knowledge of the ancient teachings of our greatest ancestors from the Nile Valley civilization. He's been able to bring this to the world. So it is my pleasure, my honor to bring to you tonight for one of two, medi uh, two meditation uh, seminars, webinars that we'll have this week, Ra'u Nefer Amen. Uh, we refer to him uh, though he is a doctor, he has an honorary doctorate of divinity, uh, we choose to refer to him as Shechem or Shechem, which is the ancient Egyptian uh, term for uh, the king of kings. So Shechem or Shechem, uh, we greet you in the words of power and peace. Let's make sure that you are unmuted here. Uh, and in the comedic term, we say Anech Harak. I believe you're muted, sir. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's power, peace, and blessings. So uh, I want to welcome you back. I want to thank you on behalf of the hundreds of students uh, who have already started taking advantage of this great um, work, your latest great work. And we are so excited. You know, uh, I've been very fortunate to be with you for uh, longer than I should say, uh, but it's been uh, several decades. And back in the day, we um, we were treated to be able to be lectured by you personally uh, every week. And uh, our meditations, we had to use uh, cassettes. For those of you old enough to remember what that was, you know. Uh, and um, and now we're at the point where, in the palm of our hand, we can hear your words, we can read. Uh, and study the wonderful uh, information on the various neteru, the parts of our spirit. Uh, we can we can uh, learn about the affirmations, the truisms, and we can get a guided meditation right in the palm of our hand on our mobile device. So thank you for being here, and thank you for putting this together. Thank you for having me and helping me bring these teachings from ancient Egypt and shamanic India and so forth, as you say, so that people can can get these teachings even on your uh, smartphones. That makes the phone smarter than uh, they were intended to be. Right. <laughs> take the take the phone to the park and sit down and meditate on improving your life. Yes. Well, we have Wonderful. such an important topic today, Shechem Shechem, because you are showing us the practical application of spirituality specifically comedic spirituality to a very essential area of our life. And that's wealth, that's finances, that's career. And you're doing it at a time where there's a lot of financial uncertainties and pressures, and we really need this information and this, this pathway. Spirit is the key. The spirit is the way beyond the things that keep you up at night. The spirituality. Yes. Yes. Right. So we're we're going to we're going to be treated with a, uh, a, a in depth look at this subject matter of wealth, finance, and career, and it's very important today, especially for uh, our people, because we are often the first ones fired, the last ones hired. Uh, we are severely undercapitalized when it comes to most of us trying to go into our own business. Uh, a lot of times, we don't have the formal education. Um, I remember years ago, you did a workshop and, and um, it was so enlightening to me, even having gone to business school, because you asked the question, what was the most important factor in being successful in business? And a lot of us, uh, you know, didn't get the right answer. The, the right answer is spirituality. But also you mentioned the, the importance of mentorship. And a lot of us don't have good mentors because we don't have a, a family tradition or a community tradition of success in business. Um, there's a lot of you know industry changes right now. There's a lot of world pressures. 
you know, right now, the United States, a lot of us are concerned about uh, countries that have come together to throw a brick at us, literally. You're, you know, you've heard about BRICS, right? Britain and, uh, I mean, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, right, are uh, making a move that uh, could challenge the United States economy and affect us as well. So a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty. And um, on top of that, uh, we've just come out of a pandemic. We have a lot of challenges with health. We have a lot of family relationships, dynamics that also play into financial challenges. So this is a very, very uh, important topic. And I would like um, to ask you to start us off with um, what is it about Ma'at and Ma'at, the 11 laws uh, applied to wealth in this case, that is essential for us to begin to understand. Very, very good question. Very good topic for us to deal with at a time like this. You know, when we are facing a possible shutdown of the US, United States government come June 1, if people in Congress don't come together to agree on the budget. Mm -hmm. We're also staring down a recession, you know, uh, in the middle of an inflation. <laughs> yeah, now the prices are very high, you know, and yet we're looking at a recession where there will be lots of, you know, millions of jobs lost. Mm -hmm. At the same time that we might be having a failure in the government to pay their bills and so on, so that's going to really, you know, uh, tax people, you see, uh, on the survival skills. You see that? Mm -hmm. And uh, survival, and survival in, in dignity is one of the goals of success, financial success. Yes. You see that? You know, and, and you know, many of, of our people are going to be in very shaky position, you know, in, in this, you know, threatened, you know, uh, financial environment. <clears throat> For the simple fact that we have not been taught mm -hmm. how to deal with financial upheavals. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to school and they teach us... <clears throat> work skills. They give us skills that enable us to do our work, but not how to be successful at doing our work. We, we're not taught how to be successful in our, you know, schooling, mm -hmm. you know, you know, uh, family life and relationships affect how we perform, you know, in the work environment, in the financial and economic environment. We're not taught the rules of success as they apply to family life and relationships and so on. Mm -hmm. and the problem is, is that, you know, um, like I said, the Western system focuses on teaching work skills, but not success skills. Mm -hmm. you see that? Okay. In other words, you know, after all is said and done, and if and when we go through this financial upheaval that is on the horizon, you see, there will be some people who will uh, experience disaster mm -hmm. and other people will even make a tidy profit. Right. The latter will be called successful people. Mm -hmm. You see, because they have been taught how to be successful. Mm -hmm. You see that? But the thing is, well, let me just pull that back a little bit for things that I will say a little later. Most people who are successful have the success talent. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. They have the success skill. Mm -hmm. you see? Uh, because, you know, and then the majority of us that don't have that success skill or talent are the ones that, quote, fail. You see, if, if I put you in a situation that requires for you to know calculus, mm -hmm. and you will not taught calculus, mm -hmm. you're not going to do well in that situation. Right. And you would incorrectly call yourself a failure. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the majority of the people that do not make the mark in life 
they're not failures. They just simply were not taught how to be successful. Yeah, it's so it's so interesting because I've been very fortunate. I, I was able to get a good um, college education, but it really wasn't until um, I went outside of what was taught in school and I started to, to study things like, you know, some of these success gurus out there that I'm like, why didn't we learn any of this in school? You know, we had to go through all the rigors of college and everything else and then try to prepare ourselves for a career. And then you got to go outside of that curriculum to even have a topic like success. Yeah, success should be taught in high school, starting mm -hmm. for the ninth grade. So it should be taught all the way through college. You mm -hmm. see that? The mm -hmm. reason that success is not taught is because the basic principles of success, you know, are rooted in spiritual science and psychology. Mm -hmm. So the majority, I mean, how, who in um, the school system has to learn psychology, you know, as it applies to success or have learned spiritual, spiritual science? Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. taught to teachers, to, for teachers to teach and so on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the solution to the problem is to have courses, you see, in success, if not in the school system, at least in the private sector. And at the beginning of the 20th century, you know, a gentleman by the name of Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. you see, he became very much, you know, uh, aware and acutely aware of the need for teaching success. And he wrote books, you know, Think and Grow Rich, you know, also mm -hmm. the laws of success. And he had the first success institute. You see that? Where he taught courses based on, you know, the, the ethics, the, 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 the power of ethics, virtues, and the, 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 the crowning part of his teaching was, you know, positive thinking and imagination, mm -hmm. you know, as major success tools. You see that? Following, mm -hmm. and, and he learned it by, by studying the lives, you know, of uh, several dozen very, you know, powerful, successful men like Henry Ford and Andrew Carnegie, you know, F.W. Woolworth and Thomas Edison. You know, he was he had personal friendship with all of these people, several dozens of them, mm -hmm. and he studied their biographies and interviewed them and found the commonality. But I will explain to you a little later on why his success classes and teachings then quiet, you know, uh, secure for the majority of people the desired goal. Mm -hmm. His books and his system were followed up by people like, you know, uh, Maxwell, you know, with his psycho-cybernetics and, and then people like uh, the uh, silver mind control system and, mm -hmm. you know, Stephen Covey with the, the seven habits of highly... Um, successful people and so on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the other people that came up with the uh, laws of attraction, they all borrowed from him. They say that. And mm -hmm. lots, you know, a good number of people were successful from, from following these teachings, but the teachings did not really achieve the mega effect. You see that, that uh, they promised because, like I said, they were rooted in spirituality, spiritual science, which these people did not master, mm -hmm. was rooted in psychology, which these people did not master. And this is where, you know, Ma'at, the 11 laws of health, wealth, and success comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, it is based on the ancient committed way of life and science of life, okay? Uh, and you, we know that the ancient Egyptians were among the most successful people in the history of the world. You know, over 4,000 years of, ma of maintaining a nation mm -hmm. that, that led the, the, the charge and, the, and laid the foundation of all other cultures and civilizations in the world. So these are the things that, you know, uh, we are putting in this course here, the, the, the 11 laws of health, wealth, and success. Yes. Yes, certainly um, some of our greatest ancestors and, and a, quite a legacy of success. 
So um, many people are speaking about ma'at nowadays and speaking about it in terms of, uh, p of truth and justice and uh, righteous behavior and so forth. But in the course that you're offering, um, ma'at is one of the faculties that you're speaking of when you say um, the need to uh, awaken faculties. Is, is, that, is that right? Yes, you know, because you see, you know, all of these success uh, uh, systems that are taught, right? Mm -hmm. They identify, you know, the principles and behavior of successful people. You know, be focused, you know, be harmonious, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, be sincere and so on. And there was this belief that, that if we taught people, you know, uh, the principles and the people live the principles that that would be enough to make them successful. Mm -hmm. The truth is, is that, um, you know, we have our behavior, our actions and effects in life are based on, you know, uh, faculties of the spirit. You see that? Let's take, for example, a pride of lions, right? A pride of lion is a society of lions, and it's a very successful society. <laughs> you know, they work together. You know, uh, members of the same pride don't they don't kill each other. They work harmoniously together to survive. They're mm -hmm. guided by an inner, you know, system. You see, we call it instinct. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's that inner, you know, information center that that guides these animals to work, you know, socially together to achieve their goals, to know, you know, when to, um, you know, hibernate and when to, you know, travel other distances to achieve their goals and so on. Well, we have the same thing, but on a higher level. The spirit is the source of the intuition and we have to awaken these faculties. You know, while the instinctive faculties are awakened, you know, in us and in animals, the spiritual faculties, which are the higher source for man, have to be awakened by us. Nature yeah. will not awaken those faculties. They must be awakened by us. And this is what spirituality is all about, awakening the faculties of the spirit. It's just not simply giving people spiritual information. It's awakening the spiritual faculties. And this course here gives you the, the mantras, the words of power, for awakening these faculties so that they can then guide you to your success, to your health, to your well-being, and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're just joining us, you have joined Comedic Legacies broadcast, and we're talking to Ra Unef Ramen. He's a Shechem or Shechem of the Osara Set Society, founded 50 years ago. Um, he's certainly an example of building a successful international organization, a successful author, lecturer, publisher, uh, musician, master um, pianist, and uh, composer, composer over, over 100 uh, meditation musical tracks, and a teacher, guide, and counselor, as well as um, the, the person who intuited the Medu Neter oracle, which uh, many of you are familiar with. And today we're talking about Ma'at, the 11 laws as applied to wealth. So um, Shechem or Shechem, you were speaking about people whose books that I've read and many people on this webinar have read. We're talking about Think and Grow Rich, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, The Laws of Power and so forth, all of these success systems and what your message is here is that ma'at, the 11 laws, um, application to being successful uh, answers the question why when so many of us have read these books and tried to em emulate these behaviors, we haven't gotten the full benefit um, of success. Yes, for example, we, you know, you, you read these books as well as many other books on other aspects of social life, right? And well-being. And uh, we find that if you go through the 11 laws of the spiritual faculties, right? We will find that these principles that are taught to us, you know, um, 
they they map to the faculties of the spirit. The mm. difference is, is that we just don't need to be informed. We have to awaken the faculty to manifest these behavior. Let's take, for example, I'd like to run down the 11 faculties and how, when they're awakened, how, what they contribute to our success and well-being. You see, the highest faculty is amen. You know, you heard of amen, ra, and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And people at the end of the prayer say amen, mm -hmm. and so on. So all of that comes from the, the highest faculty of the spirit, amen, which is a source of peace. To, be, to have a peaceful response to challenges and opportunities in life is one of the most important, you know, virtues, you know. Uh, but the thing is, is that if I tell you to be peaceful whenever you're challenged, knowing that is not enough, you have to meditate with the word of power, the vibratory rate that awakens that faculty. Mm -hmm. You see that? You remember the Ella Fitzgerald commercial where she hit a note and it broke the, 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 the wine glass? Right. Meaning that, you know, the two were vibrating at the same frequency. So the, the, the sound, you know, awakened the molecules that were dormant in the glass till they broke. Mm -hmm. So the same thing is this amen faculty within you and all the other 11 faculties, they're dormant. And you awaken them by vibrating their frequency, which is what the mantras are. The head cow. Mm. You see that? So if I meditate, you see, you know, with the mantra, the head cow of the men faculty, I awaken it. I do this often enough, visualizing the behavior that I'm seeking, such as, you know, responding in a peaceful way to challenging situations. You see that? Then that faculty will execute, you see, the peaceful behavior. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes from understanding, it comes from awakening and putting to, to work a faculty within us. You see that? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if this faculty is not awakened within us, we will get overexcited. We will, you know, uh, make wrong judgments. We will choose careers based on our likes and dislikes. You see that? It's important to like some uh, field of work, but we must first know the truth about that field of work. Mm -hmm. You know, is that is that industry going to be around a year from now, five years from now? Many people went to school and majored in IT only to find that three, four years later, you know, the, the, the businesses were outsourcing all the IT work to India mm -hmm. <laughs> because it was cheaper. You see that? Okay. So um, right now, AI, artificial intelligence, is going to put a lot of industries out of business. A lot of white-collar people are going to be out of business because you chose your field based on likes and dislikes as opposed to, you know, you know um, sitting down and studying what's, you know, you know, what's the trajectory for the next 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, people... You know, they're going to careers and jobs because they like it and so on. If you don't master the faculty for peace, you're not going to get along with workers, with your co-workers. You're not going to get along, you know, with your family members. And you need to be in harmony and sync with family members and co-workers and, you know, bosses and employees or whatever in order to be successful. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So the Amen faculty you know, removes the responses of anger, fear, worry, and things of that nature, which I said earlier, you know, many of you are going to be challenged by, you know, what might happen in the economy in the next, you know, three, two to three, four weeks. You see that? Yeah, if you if you look at the news or you go on YouTube or you, you, you look at anything, um, it would seem that very natural. It would seem very natural to be worried. It would seem very natural to be, some of us might say, um, I'm concerned uh, or to become, you know, fearful of, you know, well, what happens? You know, uh, we had several banks collapse and there's, uh, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of information saying that there's, other, you know, a great percentage of the uh, banks in the United States are, are on paper or underwater and uh, we know the kind of uh, disaster that could be if, um, you know, they run on banks and things like that. So it seems like there's 
uh, every day there are uh, things that are brought to our attention that could be a source of fear. So um, I noticed in the course that you state that um, it's natural for us to be at peace. Yeah, that's, well, you see, when you respond to challenges with peace instead of anger, fear, worry, grief, right? Mm -hmm. You're protecting your health, your IQ, your performance ability. <clears throat> medicine for the past 2,000 years, going back to the Yellow Emperor Kinos of Internal Medicine, mm -hmm. they discovered and, and confirmed by psych psychobiologists today that these emotions, anger, fear, worry, grief, and so forth, they damage your health. Mm -hmm. They lower your IQ. They damage your performance in life. So my conclusion is that these emotional responses cannot be natural because nothing that is natural can hurt you. You see that? Mm -hmm. If it hurts you, it cannot be natural to you. These emotions are natural to the psychological inheritance from the animal kingdom. You see that? You know, the, 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 those brain centers and neurohormonal centers within us, they you know, they generate the, the response of fear, worry, grief, you see, because they're connected to vital functions within us. Mm -hmm. You see that? Otherwise, it would have been pushed out of, our, out, out of our being. You see that? Evolutionary. So the thing is that you have to transcend them. You have mm -hmm. to get to the point where you, if I respond to every single channel, a challenge with peace as opposed to harmful emotions, which cause stress. I'm damaging my health. I'm damaging my ability to survive. So no, these things are not, they're not, not, they're not natural. Mm -hmm. You see that? And mm -hmm. these are the things that we, and it's encoded, you know, in the ancient Egyptian teachings. You see that? In this 42, you know, um, you, you know, um, affirmations of truth, mm -hmm. of freedom from sin, so incorrectly called for two negative confessions. Yes. You know, one of the things that the initiate had to affirm is that they did not give in to anger. Mm -hmm. They didn't give in to fear, which is that I did not eat my heart out. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's the whole thing is that, yes, you have to go beyond fear and worry, but you, can't, you just cannot say it. You have to put into your mind the affirmations of the law of a man after you awaken the man faculty and and engage in the proper visualization of behavior that you see are consonant with the laws of peace and visualize the mundane blessings, health, wealth, and so forth that you want to get from living truth. Wow. If you're just joining us on Facebook or on YouTube, we're talking with Ra Uneframen, the author of the Medunitaire series here at Comedic Legacy. And we are sharing that over 6,000 years ago, our greatest ancestors <clears throat> understood that it was a sin, that it was a shortcoming, that it was detrimental for us to give in to fear and anger and worry and grief. And here we are, these thousands of years later, most of us walking around believing that these are unavoidable and natural ways to respond uh, in a stressful manner. So this great course, Ma'at, the 11 Laws of Wealth, Health, and Success is now available. It's available for an on-demand stream on our SoundWise platform. And um, Shechem or Shechem, I understand that the material, the guided meditations, the written instructions are also going to be supplemented by um, webinars and teach teachings and guided meditations conducted for the students um, only on our platform. That's correct, right. And, and to let them know what they're getting, you know, they're going to get a, a full teachings on how to awaken all 11 faculties with all the mantras that go with them and guidance for visualization, you know, of uh, how to live these laws and so on. So I'd like to add a few more of them. You know, uh, the most important, you know, uh, action that we must take to secure our well-being, our wellness, is 
to secure help from God. Lots of people don't believe, I should say, no God, <laughs> you see, to exist is real. So they say things like, you know, um, the universe is blessing me. No, it's an entity, a consciousness, you know, a will, and a power which is God. You see that? And the most important, you know, teachings in ancient Egypt was how to unite with God, to be one with God. And the man and the woman that achieved, you know, uh, this unity were called an Oser. They added Oser to their name as a, you know, as a title, you know. So the law of Oser, they say, uh, teaches you, you know, from that faculty from within. When you awaken it and visualize its actions in your life, it it guides you to unite with God. You see that? God is one, you know, we call omnipresent, right? God is is one with all human beings, with all people, with nature. And when you unite with God, then you unite with all other people. You see that? And in, in that way, you're able to assist people through spiritual action. You're able to receive their help through spiritual action, just not simply physical action. You see, people think that the only way I'm going to help you is by some physical action. That's materialism. Mm. You see that? To help you, I just don't need to talk to you or give you something, even though those things are important. I could also communicate my assistance to you to help you get that bread, to help you get that money, to help you get that help that you need from spirit to spirit. But to do it, I must first unite with God. And that's the law of our man. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, because you see, you know, when things begin to fall apart in this economy, you're going to find that's when you need help from others. That's when you need, you know, good relationships, you know, harmonious, peaceful, productive relationship with others. And that only comes from spiritual work. But you have to know what part of your spirit governs it because. There are 15 divisions in your spirit, 15 faculties, and they each make a different contribution. Mm -hmm. Amen is a source of peace, or self faculty is a source of union, union with God and with others. Then we have Tehute. You know, we go to philosophy and spirituality that says, you know, follow the golden mean, meaning live in a life of equilibrium, balance. You see that? You know, if somebody is is competing negative against you, don't seek victory, seek a win-win, a win for them and a win for you. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's, that is the master, you know, mind. That is, you know, the sharing, you know, of wisdom, the sharing of blessings. So, you know, so when you want to do that, when you want to, to win, win by making others win along with you, it requires wisdom. You see that? What is wisdom? Wisdom is intuitive guidance from God. See? Meaning that God will teach you. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? God will teach you how to do things in a balanced way. You see that? Okay, there's a rubric in the comedic teachings that says that the motto of Tehute is to make the combatant brothers go home in peace. You see that? And a symbol of Tehute is an ibis bird standing on one leg in a pool of water. You see, that's a, that's the vision of the symbol of equilibrium. You see that? And equilibrium, you see, in all our thoughts, emotions, and actions is very healing. It's homeostasis. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? And the thing is, is that, you know, uh, by awakening the Tehute faculty, you're waking the voice of God within you. People come and say to me, Shekhar Meshach and Ron Neferman, how do you write all those books? 40 plus books on homeopathy and Chinese medicine and you know, you know, Chinese astrology and astrology. You know, how do you write all these books on you know on all of these subjects? That's to have divine guidance. Mm -hmm. You see that. So in the module dealing with the Tehuta faculty, you learn how to awaken the voice of God within you. 
Well, actually, I say you learn how to expand because God talks to you every time you're about to do something wrong and that voice that you call the voice of conscience mm. chimes mm. in and say, you know you're wrong. You know what you're doing is wrong. Mm. If you learn to obey that faculty at all times, you see that eventually, you know, that little sound bite will expand into books and volumes of information. Mm. You feel that? And will be there to enlighten your path at any moment and so forth. You know. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, Shechem, Shechem, you've been teaching for a long time, and there's so many people who have benefited from your teachings. I'd like to bring uh, one of them forward uh, this evening. So we have here uh, Kaim Harry Heter from Chicago, and she's been a student of Ra'u Nefra Men. And um, welcome to Comedic Legacy, to our broadcast. And uh, we just want to hear you share um, just one of your uh, many wonderful experiences that uh, have come out of applying this system of comedic meditation. Tuahu, Netcha Rak Shekham Shekham and Irwa. Right, Tapu. My name is Kayim Hari Hitzer, and I am with the Chicago HESP. And um, I like to tell you about a situation at work where um, a coworker reported to HR that I was aggressive with her behind closed doors in a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, in the meeting with the coworker, I was very calm and peaceful, but actually she was actually the one that became upset with me in the one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one meeting and she tried to, and tried to flip it on me. Um, the coworker was also spreading the same rumor to other coworkers, and a lot of people alienated themselves from me. Um, the HR complaint ended up escalating to legal and risk assessment, so it became very serious where I had the potential to lose my job. Mm -hmm. I knew that I needed Tahuti. I needed wisdom so to help guide me through this. So I ended up doing an oracle reading to resolve the situation peacefully and to bring harmony with the with the coworker and have a win-win situation. Now, I won't go in depth of the reading. I will keep it brief with the key themes that came out of the reading. And first, there was a negative psychic energy at play here. And my person needed to make sure that I kept my vitality, my energy up. I need to make sure that I kept my images and thoughts pure towards the coworker and be at one, you know, be unity, be united with them. I needed to focus on the 11 laws, of course, meditate and be humble. And there were other things that I won't go, in, go into, but doing all of these things and doing the reading for what Tahuti was saying with this Oracle reading that I, it would then lead others to help me through it to resolve the situation peacefully. So while I was meditating on the reading, there was a vision that came in during the meditation of the coworker and I in the sunlight, smiling and laughing with each other. So I said, okay, let me do this work and let me keep this vision at the forefront of my mind while dealing with this. And even when I saw the coworker at work in the hallways, I would still keep that vision of us smiling and laughing in the sunlight. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, the situation was resolved and the complaint was dropped and it did go away. I did not lose my job. And um, actually, the majority of the people who were investigating the situation did not believe the story. But one thing about the reading was that the co-worker would have a hard time accepting the outcome and it would take some time for them. So this situation happened in early December and it re was resolved in early January, but from January until about just two weeks ago, the coworker ignored me, wouldn't answer my emails, would ignore me in the meetings, ignore me in the hallway, just avoided me. So I still kept with the guidance of the reading of, of Tehuti's wisdom. I still did the work. I still kept that vision of the coworker right in the sunlight, smiling and laughing. And just two weeks ago, I received an email from the coworker asking me to help them with the project. So the next day I come into the office and the coworker has green and yellow on, which is Heteru's colors who governs harmony. The sun is shining through the office and she, the coworker just looks at me and starts smiling and we start talking about the project together and we're laughing and 
immediately I thought of the reading. I said, okay, this is it. This is my vision. And so without going to Tahuti, without doing the Oracle reading, my person would not have been able to resolve this on my own. Um, I'm thankful for Shechem and Shechem's teachings, this way of life and for the Maduna Toyer Oracle system, because it really helped to have a winning on a win-win situation with my coworker. Thank you so much for that testimonial. And of course, you know, um, you know, you did a meditation and the whole thing was following the law of Tehuti. Now, you know, don't see don't, don't seek a win for you and a loss for the other person. Mm -hmm. Because only God knows, you know, what why this person did what they did, why they're functioning the way they are functioning. And your job as a spiritual person is to help that person learn through your divine example of the way of divinity. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Kaim Harry Tear from Chicago. That's wonderful. Uh, yes, one of uh, so many thousands of people have a similar experience, and uh, being in this in your company, and um, we're speaking with Raul Nefar Men, the founder of the Sarset Society. In 1982, he initiated um, many of us into the priesthood to study committed meditation. And there have been thousands and thousands of examples of uh, people getting this type of resolution, this type of benefit in the most mysterious ways. So we appreciate that testimonial. And um, Shechem Shechem, you were, you, were, you were taking us down the Pout Neteru or the tree of life and speaking about the laws. And we just heard a great example of the law of Tehuti that when we follow this, when we embed it into our spirit through meditation, as we learn how to do in this course, um, the type of outcome we can get. What are some of the benefits or, or um, uh, fa other faculties uh, that are included in the course? Okay. Uh, and by the way, you know, the, the outcome that that young lady had, right, couldn't have been just simply from being informed of the principle. Mm -hmm. It was a force that emanated from her spiritual faculty. They don't understand that. Mm -hmm. When we talk about spiritual science and spirituality, we're talking about a, a, a awakening faculties, mm -hmm. arousing forces within us and guiding them. You see that? Because unlike animals and plants and so forth, you know, man has command over the forces of nature and the universe flowing through her and his being. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to another faculty, right? Sacred, mm -hmm. down the tree. So sacred is a faculty that governs our destiny. Mm -hmm. You see that? Meaning that, you know, we all come to earth with a divine plan. You see that? And, and you know, all our goals in life, you know, requires some power to make them happen. You see that? Okay? So the thing that we have to understand is that Above and beyond, you know, our, you know, life plans and goals is a divine plan. There's a, there's a divine plan. Mm -hmm. And the divine plan is to eventually evolve, evolve <clears throat> man into becoming a divine being. Right now, man is at the homo sapiens level of evolution. And if we look at homo sapiens, right, man as we know man for the past, let's say about four or 5,000 years of history, is a sorry mess. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Present man, homo sapiens, cannot be the end goal of evolution. Mm. You see that the end goal of evolution is a divine woman, a divine man. And Oser, <clears throat> I said earlier that um, the men and women in ancient Egypt that attained the divinity appended the title of Oser to their name. So we have, if we take time to go study the biography of these Egyptian priests and priestesses and common folks who realized the divinity, and those biographies are, are hidden in the museum in Rome and England and, you know, Chicago, you know, museum and so forth, history and so on. So they have a, the biography of men and women that claim that they achieved divinity, hmm. okay? And, and some of them also, some of these publications exist, you know, 
in libraries and in bookstores as well. The other people, you know, they explain their realization of divinity and so on. So the thing is, is what you call your destiny are the various challenges which are really your curriculum for you to overcome. You see that, the challenges of life. Mm. You see. And in overcoming those challenges of life, you will achieve your divinity. And one of the major challenges of life is to unite your life goals to the divine plan. The mm. divine plan is, is for every man and woman to advance their evolution to become a divine being. You see that? So when you sit down to plan your personal goal, you need to think about how, how, how does me becoming a musician or a dentist, how does me becoming a doctor, you know, or a, a basketball player, how does it advance the cause of mankind's divinity? Mm. And make the two, cont you know, happen. And in doing that, there's going to be major challenges. But in solving that challenge, you will tap into God's spiritual power, which, which you have at your own personal disposal. Mm. <clears throat> you know, we say God is omnip omnipotent. And man is limited in his power. So you have to unite yourself to God's power to overcome the challenges in life. You see that? Okay? So that's the law of sacred. You see that? Mm -hmm. And it's followed by the law of ma'at, okay? Which is the law of order and harmony. You know, how to, if, if we look at nature, we find that nature is a harmonious web, an interaction of different creatures and different, you know, uh, biospheric, you know, elements, you know, working together, you know. You know, everything is harmony with, in harmony with each other, okay? Um, you know, man comes into this world, you know, he needs water, it's there. He needs food, it's there. He mm. needs, you know, oxygen, it's there. He needs sunlight, it's there. And everything is harmoniously revolved and integrated and things of that nature. And, you know, the, 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 the hub of this harmonious, you know, cyclic, cycling of factors is what we call love. Mm. You see that? So when we study the law of ma'at, okay, we have to go beyond the, the, the cold intellectual statement that ma'at is law and order. You see that? Ma'at is the love of God that binds everything together and make them work harmoniously and so on. So that the challenge of living the law of ma'at is to love God. You see that? And how do you love God? By becoming a part of the divine plan. Whatever you set as your goal in life, you know, you have to unite it to divine plan. It has to make the world a better place. It has, but a better place in the divine sense. Mm. It's just not to give people food and give them water. You have to help them, you see, see your divinity to become divine themselves. You, you, you get me? Yes, yes, but it, it seems like there's so many different ways that people speak about love and, you know, um, it, 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 it seems confusing when you say love God, but at the same time we think of love with the, the reciprocal warmth of a, you know, a mate or, a, or even, you know, we love, you know, material things. So what what was what were our ancestors speaking about when they when they spoke about love? Well, I just ran down the different things that na so-called nature, which is really God, has provided for us for our being, for our life and survival. Mm -hmm. We didn't pay for any of it. <laughs> we received these things without giving anything in in return for them. So that is the the, the essence of what love is. Love is giving, seeking nothing in return. You mm -hmm. see that? Which you have to, you know, when you, you know, um, when you make your life in sync, to be in sync 
with the, with the divine plan. You see that? Don't ask for something in return. Do it because, you see, that is what God is working for, for mankind. And then you got to follow up with this love in your love for people. If you have a relationship with somebody, you know, give to them seeking nothing in return. That is love. And I hear where you're coming from because the meaning of the word love has been distorted by people that think that love is having sex and love is caressing and hugging, you know, and things of that nature. You can have all of these, you know, sensual, emotional interaction and still do wrong to the person that you claim to love. Mm -hmm. You see that? Okay, if you're going to love somebody, you must be prepared to do two things. Give to that person seeking nothing in return. In other words, you know, help them realize, you know, their divine needs. And the other thing that you have to do, you see, is to give to them the best of you. If I love somebody, I give them the best of me. What is the best of me? That me that has realized or has worked as realizing its divinity. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. People say they love you and they bring the anger to you, they bring the fear to you, the worry, instead of working together to transcend these stressful, suffering events that are caused by not knowing your spirituality. You see that? So love is giving, seeking nothing in return, and it's you giving the best of you, which is your divinity. Well, um, I don't advocate for the devil, Shekhar Shekhar, but a lot of people find that a very tall order. Um, how, how, how would you respond when someone says, well, you know, if I give and I give and this person's not reciprocating or the person's not respecting me or the person is maybe even still uh, trying to do things to undermine me, how do I know I'm not being used or how, you know, how, how can I not diminish myself and, and my needs when I'm giving to people that don't give back to me or it might even be against my interest? One of the things that you will discover in working spirit, the spiritual laws, mm -hmm. right, is that the blessings that you need, you see, need not come from the person you give to. Mm. As a matter of fact, if I give to one person seeking nothing in return, I put myself in a position to receive from the entire planet. Anyone in the entire planet will come back and bless me. And I'm sure many of you have received blessings from people that you don't really know, that you didn't do anything to receive that. You see that, okay? So, but you enhance it and you, you know, and you expand that ability by just giving, seeking nothing in return. And that's all God gives to you. God didn't ask you for anything. It's up to you. You see that? And, and then no, there's also, since you're put in a position, there's something called divine protection, which the, the yogis call the law of karma, meaning mm -hmm. that, you know, there are lots of people that do wrong and escape the, the justice of man, the laws of man. You see that? But the thing is, is that you, you know, you can protect yourself against injustice from others, or you can secure, you know, bouncing back. You see that? To so even a higher level than, you see, you know, uh, where you were when people did wrong to you by living justice yourself. If I live a life of justice, you see that? Okay. I'm just with people, okay, and 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 I am orderly in my and harmonious in my relationship with people, helping people, loving them. When people do wrong to me, I will bounce back even higher. Mm. You see that, <laughs> and that is a full understanding of the law of karma. It's just not reaping what you sow; it's reaping higher than what you sow. Mm. You see that you sow good, you you reap good, much higher. So this is uh, Herukahuti now. That's a lot uh, of Herukahuti. That's good. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. yes. And, and, oh. and, 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 and it, it, it is very close to Lord Heru. Mm. You see that? Heru is, is the freedom of the will. You see that? Meaning that you have, you know, the freedom to choose to be, to react, respond peacefully or to give in to your anger and fear, which is no good for you, not natural to you because it harms you, lowers your IQ. And some of us can't afford to drop a single point in our IQ, can we? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so hold on to the peace, okay? <laughs> so the thing is that you have that freedom to choose, meaning if you have freedom to choose, then you're not compelled to follow. Some people think, oh, I can't help being angry. I can't help being afraid. I can't help worrying. You see, then you, if you have freedom of will, freedom to choose, then you are free of compulsions. And if you're free of compulsions, you can then now set your destiny path. It gives you mastery over your destiny because all the challenges that are destined to cross your path, you see that, okay, are, you know, energized by your emotions. You see that, mm -hmm. okay? And so once you're committed to living the living laws, every challenge in your life is nothing else but a step to higher power, higher power, higher power, as long as you respond with peace. There's a saying out there that, 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 that what won't kill you will make you stronger. Mm -hmm. That's half true. It will make you stronger only if you choose to respond with peace. Thank but you. If you don't respond <laughs> with peace, it will kill you. Right. <laughs> I've often said that here in that song. I know a lot of people that what didn't kill them put them halfway to the grave. <laughs> well, but you have you have the choice of peace. You see that? Yes. Yes. You so you're 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 speaking about destiny and freedom and how these two realities come together. Because some people say, well, you know, if there was a destiny, then I, you know, why do anything? Because everything that's going to happen to me is destined, you know? So there must not be destiny because I seem to be, you know, reaping things that, you know, I exercise my freedom. You know, it's a, it's a topic where um, people find it hard to reconcile those two things. So you're saying that once we exercise our freedom properly, then we have the ability to exert uh, an influence over our destiny. Once you use your freedom of will properly, which is to master all the 11 laws, mm. not, a, not a small task. <laughs> but once you master all the 11 laws, for what? To serve God, to mm. be the ambassador of God in the world, okay? To help others become divine beings. Then you become the master of your destiny. Mm. You don't become master of your destiny, as some Rosicrucians claim, by having an indomitable will, you mm. know, and, and by knowing all of these esoteric principles. No, they have to awaken all the 11 faculties of your spirit by with their mantras, living their laws, you know, proper visualization, and with the proper, you know, motivations. The real reason, which is to serve God, mm. to advance God's plan, which is to populate the earth with divine men and divine women, mm. just not homo sapiens, you know? You do best for your children when you have them become divine beings. So some people stop at having this, their, 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 their children get a, a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD. They say, I've done everything I can do for my child. How many, how many people with PhDs, you know, have a bad life because they're not spiritual? Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? A lot of people with PhDs are destroying the world. So you got to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. But it's not principles. It's awakening the faculties within you that are responsible for these effects in your life and in the world. Learn to awaken them. Hmm. You see that? Wow. So let's follow cool. up with Heteru. Right? Mm -hmm. Heteru is our imagination. You know, and all of the success teachers, you know, law of attraction and, you know, Napoleon Hill, and they, they talk about the imagination being really a magical faculty within us. Okay, what we 
because what we imagine ourselves to be in certain situations conjure up emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Conjure up peace, joy, anger, fear. You, know, you can't. What people don't understand is that emotions are nothing else, nothing more or less than what we call the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. You see that? So, you know, and if you study Chinese, you know, Taoist teachings and, you know, uh, Bazi and so forth and acupuncture, you find that the various emotions are nothing else but forms of chi. You see, forces of nature, the elements and things of like nature. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that, you know, uh, when you cultivate, you see, only two emotions in life, peace and joy. If you focus on visualizing only those two emotions, which are the only two emotions that are natural to you. I said earlier, anger, fear, worry, grief, they destroy your health, destroy your mind, your intellect, lower your IQ, you know, lower your, you know, your um, PQ, which is your performance quotient, and mm -hmm. so on, okay? Which means that if they damage you, they can't be natural to you. Peaceful response, heals you. Joyful response heals and empower your visions. You see that? It's not the power of the word. It's not the power of the image. It's the power of the joy. Joy is a solar force, the kundalini energy. The, it is the chi that empowers your vision. So if you have a vision of achieving X, Y, Z in life, becoming, you know, a carpenter, you know, becoming a great musician, whatever you see, your vision, that vision is empowered by joy. Mm -hmm. I see that. So, you, you know, along with awakening with the mantras, the faculty that, you know, of, of Heteru or any other faculty of spirit that you want to achieve your goal, you have to have a joyful vision of living the laws of God, a joyful vision of enjoying you know, the things in life that you are seeking. You see that? And that joy will empower the, the vision, the image to become a reality mm -hmm. in the world. You see that? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is not to feed that image with joy now and then, every once in a while. Okay? You want to feed the images of you living truth. You want to feel the images of the things you want in life Permanently, all the time. You want to, you want to be a steady, unending flow of 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 life force going to these images. You see that, and that permanent flow of joy is what we call happiness, mm. which is a word that is not understood in the Western world. They say, "Oh, so and so made me so happy," and then later on, something happened. I'm not happy anymore. No, you're not joyful. Something made you joyful. But happiness is an end, it's unending joy. And the way we encapsulate in our teachings is that, you see, what is happiness? Happiness is enjoying the good things in life. And being at peace when you don't have the good things in life, but enjoying being at peace. So then you're always joyful. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, enjoy it when you have it, you know, and enjoy the peace when you don't have it. Mm -hmm. This is happiness because you want you want to that life force, which is joy. Remember that, right? In the tarot, for example, you know the the uh, the suite in the tarot that corresponds to the rule, the imagination is the empress, mm -hmm. right? And she sits with the solar globe around her head. Mm. And the same thing in the Heteru, in the Kemetic teachings, we find that the hieroglyph for Heteru is a goddess, you know, with a horn and the solar orb in the middle of the horn, mm. you know, the, the, the bull's horn. Mm -hmm. They show that it is, you know, what we call joy is solar energy. Mm. Okay? Joy is solar energy. Mm. Okay, it's Kundalini force. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know when you stay joyful, 
okay, as opposed to waiting for something to happen to be joyful, you need to know that you have the ability to always be joy. Because you see, I said that Heru is a free will, right? And Heteru is het Heru, meaning there's a Heru in Heteru. Mm. <laughs> in the head is the house, so he translated into the house of Heru, or the house of the freedom of the will. That's what Heteru is, imagination. Meaning that your soul or force, your freedom of the will, lives within your images. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you learn, you know, to do this ritual of, of Heteru in this course, My Other 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success, you will learn to make yourself joyful and keep yourself in a joyful state. Mm. The body never wears its energy out and its neurotransmitter out by maintaining peace and enjoying being peaceful. It's a quiet, steady, unending joy, as opposed to the low, loud, rambunctious joy you get, you know, when you're out there playing games and playing, you know, and enjoying nature and so on. The power of life and, and success and healing is within you, and God will never let that power ransom to something outside of you. Hmm. People say, I need to have $2,000 to go to Acapulco to enjoy myself. <laughs> God will not hold your life force ransom to you finding $2,000 to go to Jamaica or Acapulco, Mexico or wherever you think. Joy is <laughs> hiding out. <laughs> you feel that? Shechem or Shechem. Ra unefer amen. Dropping jewels tonight. Wow. What is happiness? So powerful. And um, we have someone with us tonight. I want to bring on uh, another guest. Unefer. Honkma'a. From Philadelphia who's had a recent experience with, uh, with the powers of Heteru <laughs> and the powers of joy. And it fits very, um, very succinctly into what we're talking about right now. We're talking about how are we going to make it financially in this world? How are we going to make it with all of the challenges um, that we face in our jobs, in our careers, in our entrepreneurial ventures? So uh, thank you, Unefa, for joining us tonight. I'm not to rock. Shekum Shekum. I will never come in the first. I'm not to rock. Or why am to Huti Kamal. All right, it's food. Welcome. Uh, Dwalo, thank you so much for having my person uh, here, trying to get myself situated here. Uh, You're looking beautiful. I think that's what Unefa means. Oh, uh, too, too. Dwalo, <laughs> Dwalo. Uh, I, I just wanted to, you know, share a, a few things. Uh, first and foremost, I, my name, I'm Una Frank Ma from the Philadelphia Hespo. Uh, I am in Het Haru clan and my IO, which is uh, my incarnation objective is uh, Het Haru Hotel. All right, so I'm pretty much all Het Haru for everything. Um, I, uh, uh, growing up, uh, I butted heads with my incarnation objective. I wanted to be something that I wasn't. I wanted to be a, a tough guy. I grew up in a, you know, rough city, rough neighborhood. And uh, I always wondered why those things didn't really work out well for me. And I knew some people that were you know, strong and they were all incarcerated. And I, I wanted that type of strength. That was something that I knew I didn't have. I thought that my person was weak and I wound up getting in trouble and getting incarcerated. And then I found out that I didn't want to go. <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble. And uh, while I was incarcerated, I uh, got in trouble while I was in prison and I was sent to the hole in a place called Camp Hill. And they had a library sheet that you could sign out. They had, a, you know, different categories. And I wrote, checked off for a spiritual book. That's what I wanted while I was, you know, in the hole 
uh, by myself. And uh, they slid the Maduna tear under my door. And uh, that was the only book that I had for, you know, that uh, time frame while I was in car while I was in the hole. And uh, that, that book uh, saved my life. Mm -hmm. In all honesty, that book saved my life. I mean, it made me uh, look at things differently. And, uh, you know, I, I can't, I never gave that book back. I'm, I'm sorry, Kev Hill, but I never gave that book back. <laughs> uh, Send so, him a check. <laughs> to, to. So, you know, I, I got out and, uh, you know, I, I, I got out. I was home for almost a year, you know, and, and, you know, it was different. I was in the world, you know, little worldly or whatever. And I had a really traumatic experience and uh, I said, wow, uh, you know, it, it really tried my emotions and really confusing. And uh, I said, wow, I, I really need help with this. And I didn't have my Maduna Tear Oracle cards. So I, you know, looked online and I was like, wow, you know, couldn't believe that I'd never looked online to find out where the Philadelphia Hespu was. And I looked online and I was like, wow, it's not even that far from me. And uh you know, I went there and, you know, I was just going to get some Maduna Tear uh, cards and a young man helped me out uh, when I when I was there. And, you know, he was very welcoming. You know, this was my first time uh, at the Philadelphia Hospital. He really helped me out. Uh, you know, I told him kind of what my situation was. And this, he didn't even know me, and he did a meditation with, with my person, a breathing meditation. Uh, and I was at such peace, a peace that I never had before. And after that, I mean, I, I, I cried. And, uh, you know, the, the, the brother was there with me, you know, every step of the way. I, I cried, and uh, I felt so much better. And I was like, wow, I really need this, this feeling you know, in my life. And uh, so I, I uh, you know, fast forward a couple of, you know, years, I, I stuck with it. Uh, I, you know, I stuck with it, but it was a part of me that kept reverting back to the, the worldliness. You know, I would uh, be good, you know, on Sundays. <laughs> and uh, it was difficult, you know, challenging to maintain that spiritual aspect from Sunday to Sunday. And uh, it, when we, the society introduced uh, something called the morning libation. And uh, once I started getting on to the morning libations, I mean, it just changed, changed my whole life uh, dramatically. Um, uh, it was, it was so welcoming to know that every day, this is how I can start my day by giving thanks and gratitude to the ancestors. And I had a situation where uh, somebody was uh, stealing parts of my truck uh, slowly, you know, every day I would come out and I'd be missing a, a different part of my truck. Uh, uh, first it was the tailgate, then it was the, the, the back lights, then, you know, they got so bold and, you know, stole like the front bumper, you know, off of a truck, you know, a, a bumper is big on a truck. And uh, I was like, wow. And, and I saw them on a, you know, a bell camera, my, my you know, doorbell camera had, you know, got a, a picture of the per person, you know, it wasn't really that, that good of a picture. And when they were about to turn their face where I could really see them, it, it just stopped. And, and I called the people up and they were like, well, that's the only footage that we could get because they were so far away. They weren't directly in front of the door. Uh, that was the only footage that, you know, they could get. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, really weird. I, I you know, made a police report. That's never helped me. And uh, I talked to a couple of uh, elders who I hold in, you know, high esteem in the society. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they told me to, you know, don't don't worry about that. Don't, you know, let that get the best of you. And I meditated and, and you know, during that conversations, we laughed and I, I didn't even 
uh, have, you know, any animosity or anything in my heart after that. You know, I laughed and visualized it and I, it was just a material thing. And, you know, they transitory, they come and go. And the, the next day, uh, the, you know, the next day uh, I had uh, got a, a, a call about a property, you know, that was, uh, that I inquired about. Uh, the property was going to be given to me for half of what it was, uh, you know, going to be sold for. Mm -hmm. uh, I had trying relationships uh, with my son. He called me up, asked me to help him, you know, with something with, you know, a motorcycle or whatever. Me and him built up a bond. It was, you know, a challenge, you know, with him. Uh, then uh, moving moving on. Uh, so this was about two weeks ago. So moving on to the week after that, I had a day because I, you know, pride myself on being on you know, every morning libation, you know, being there, uh, you know, in my whites and, you know, it's just, you know, a, a really uh, beautiful start to my day. And there was, a, I think it was on a Wednesday that I couldn't get on, you know, my computer just froze, uh, you know, the, the little pie chart, it just kept spinning. And I was like, wow, you know, you know, hopefully it's going to let me on. Hopefully it's going to let me on. And it didn't let me on. And uh, the the whole day was just nothing was going right for me. It was just, you know, a day full of challenges. It rained like it was like, when, you know, during that time when we had like the five days of rain. It was, you know, just, you know, really challenging uh, time. And uh, I, uh, you know, realized that that was, you know, just going to be a, a unlucky day. Uh, you know, I definitely went to bed early. Uh, that, that evening. Uh, I woke up the next morning and I received an email from the uh, uh, United States Department of Education. Um, and I've had some, you know, student loans uh, that I've had ever since uh, 1998, you know, and uh, I had some student loans that have quadrupled in value. Uh, and the email said uh, that my student loans have been deemed as predatory against my person and I am not obligated, I'm, I'm not going to be required to pay those loans uh, back and they're going to remove them from my credit report. Hmm. That was on a Thursday. Excuse me. Yeah, that was that Thursday. That Friday, I received a check in the mail for thirteen thousand uh, dollars from Workman's Comp. I was I was hurt on the job, Workman's Compensation, and you know I I called my attorney, you know, and you know I was like, is this some type of mistake? Well, well, I called him, you know, after I cashed the check, but I, you know, I did call him and uh, I said, uh, you know, is this a mistake? Uh, uh, you know, and he said. You got a check? I was like, yeah. He was like, wow. He was like, that usually doesn't happen like that because uh, it's it's rare where both uh, parties, you know, my job in the insurance company don't litigate. And uh, he was like, wow, congratulations. I was like, yeah, congratulations to you too because I know you got paid as well. And uh, you know, it was it was just uh, you know really really uh, awesome because this this way of life, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just so beautiful. It, it's, you know, I, I, I don't, I can't acknowledge uh, how thankful that I am, uh, Shechem and Shechem. I mean, I've, I've dreamt about meeting your person, you know, the, the Maduna series is phenomenal. And, and I, I'm just blessed that I've met your person that I've met Orwa, you know, that I'm in this society, that I'm walking this way of life. It is truly, truly a, a, a privilege. And I'm definitely so grateful. So I, I don't want to waste any more, you know, uh, and time. Your, and, your, and your blessings came in the cycle of Hedaru, huh? Dwan <laughs> My blessings came in the cycle of Hedaru. Signed, mean, sealed, and delivered. Can't make this up. And also one more thing. The day that I went in, 
uh, that I came to the Hetmatir for the very first time was a Friday, May 15th, 2015. Hmm. That's Hello. It. So, Hello. so I'm good. I just I just, just want to thank uh everyone, the society. Uh this this is such a beautiful thing, and everybody should definitely take advantage of, of the way of life and these wonderful teachings. You're not gonna find this anywhere else. So Dwanatir, Anetta Rock Thank Anetta you so much. Thank you, Anefa. Appreciate that. Wow. Very much on time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did the meditations, had his student loans forgiven, which is a big thing for most people, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people graduate from college and can't make ends meet because of that student loan. Can't buy a house, can't, can't buy a car, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're living like people who don't have a college degree because of that student loan. Right. Yeah. Well... I really appreciate this time um, that you're spending tonight with us, uh, Shechem and Shechem. And um, the great news is that we will be back on Thursday to continue this conversation. But the focus on Thursday will be the application of the 11 laws, Ma'at 11 laws of God to our health and to healing. Yes, people talk about spiritual healing and they think it's, it's about visualizing your person feeling well and your liver cleaning out, your blood cleaning out, you know? No, 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 no. You know, there are faculties in your spirit and your mind and psych that governs your health, your well-being. Mm -hmm. And you will learn in this course that we are, you know, that, that we are put together, you know, you will learn how to awaken and put those faculties to work, and I just want you know uh, the audience tonight to know that. Remember, you know you can play this video over and over, but knowing these principles will not, you know, will not make things happen in your life. You have to learn the mantras. You have to learn how to construct the visualizations. You see and to awaken that, those forces within you to make things happen. You see that? Mm -hmm. Because that, that's something that we have to wean ourselves from. You know, once I have information, I can make changes. No, you have to awaken the power within you. And this is what this Mountain Living Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success will, will enable you to do. Those of you who, um, you know, took the Winter Solstice course with me, know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You see that, you know? So, um, and, and I'd like to talk to you later on about, you know, people who took the winter solstice to have a special concession for them as well, mm -hmm. you know, for the next week or two. Yes. All right. Well, it's been a wonderful night. Speaking about my art. I know you picked up a lot of things. Wow, what jewels were dropped tonight? Destiny, free will, understanding what true happiness is, understanding a life that moves from peace to pleasure, from pleasure to peace, not knowing pain, and the power of the comedic meditation script. Um, it's very beautiful information. It's very concisely uh, delivered in our course, our on-demand course. Those of you who don't have the course, you can get the course tonight uh, and start your meditation, start your studies. And, um, and the information is, is very deep. Uh, it's very powerful. You can also, and, and one of our uh, folks on YouTube asked the question, Ma'at 11 Laws as an audio book. Yes, we have Ma'at 11 Laws as an audio book now on our SoundWise platform so that you can listen to this information and the background on it over and over and over again um, so that you can really get it. Uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, but one of the most powerful things that we're excited about and excited to share is as you saw tonight, um, this kind of in-depth, uh, intimate training and understanding wisdom by a master teacher, by a sage, uh, is very hard to come by. 
and everyone who becomes a member of the course by getting the uh, Ma'at 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success, the 11 modules, you will be invited to uh, private webinars, uh, teachings, and guided meditations conducted by Ra'u Nefra Men. And I'm excited to announce that the first one of these is going to be next Monday. Next Monday at 8 p.m., we will have a class members only session. And this is going to enable you to deepen your understanding, to drill down into the knowledge and also the application. How do you put that meditation script together? How do you really work these affirmations, these truisms? You know, how do you properly conduct yourself once you've entered into the meditation state? All that information is there in the course. But there's nothing like having that give and, give and take um, with the course creator. So to be involved and invited into that session on Monday, you need to be a member of the course. So um, what I'm going to do as we close out is show you exactly how to become a member. Uh, but before we do that, um, I'd like to speak on behalf of all the people who left uh, wonderful comments in our webinar, on our Facebook, on our YouTube channel, uh, Shechem Shechem, uh, there's a lot of appreciation for the wisdom that you gave us tonight and for you developing this course and making it so accessible, so affordable, uh, you know, that, that anybody can, can participate. So thank you for that, uh, Shechem Shechem. And um, we look forward to Thursday night at eight o'clock uh, to getting our next installment, focusing on our health and healing, uh, and then getting ourselves in position to participate on Monday. So thank you, Shechem Shechem. And uh, on behalf of everyone in the comedic tradition, we would like to say power, peace, and blessings to you, Anetcharak. Power, peace, and blessings to you too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Okay. All right. So how do you get started? Um, let's take another look at the link that is posted um, on your webinar, and we'll make sure that it's in the chat uh, here for you. And that's going to take you. Let me get it pulled up here. Oh, it's taking us back to the webinar registration. Let's see here. All right, bear with us. Let me put the link here in the chat for you. Right, so make sure you visit that link and go ahead and get yourself enrolled. And we will uh, share that with those of you that want to hang on. But in the meantime, we will see you on Thursday. Hetepu, peace and blessings. It's the comedic religion, but the early part of man's life is dominated by the human faculties and limitations. The essential focus of the ancient Egyptian religion is then
the transcendence of the human stage and the realization of the true and final state, the divine nature. Divinity is realized by adherence to divine laws and it confers upon man access to divine or superhuman abilities, the elevation of her mental abilities and talents, and qualifies her to enter into a partnership with God. Meduna Ter, Volume 6, by Ra Um Nefer. Amen. Superlative civilization. Divine. Unparalleled. 